guys, welcome back to my channel and back to my new series, Cravings, where I'm sharing you easy to make at home recipes should you have a craving during the day needing something sweet, because I know I do. In this episode, I'm showing you how to make French madeleines. So I learned how to make these when I was at Cordon Bleu, my pastry school, and I actually haven't made them for a while. And the reason why they're so perfect is because they're little light individual cakes. They're not too sweet and they're not too big. So it's not like having a whole slice of cake with buttercream, etc. Just a couple of bites with a cup of tea, perfection. I'm gonna do some lemon and some with raspberry, so let's get straight into it. So to start, I've got my eggs in the mixer bowl and I'm gonna be using a whisk because I'm going to be incorporating lots of air here. So into the bowl, I'm going to add my sugar and the honey. And I'm going to whisk this on a high speed until it's ballooned up until ribbon stage. So you can see how much that has risen and ribbon stage is basically when you can grab the mixture and it forms a gorgeous ribbon when you drag it on the surface. That's when you know it's ready. Now because these are a really light cake, we wanna keep the batter as light as possible. So I'm going to sift in the flour and the baking powder together. If you don't sift it, what can happen, the flour falls on the egg and sugar and collapses it a little bit. And I'm going to gently fold the flour into the egg mix. You don't want to mix like crazy once again because you don't want to collapse the egg. You want to keep that air that we've just put into it. Once most of the flour is mixed in, I can go in with my melted butter and mix that through. And then finally, I've got some lemon here, which I'm going to zest into the batter. And the combination of the lightness of this cake with the lemon tang is just divine. I absolutely love these. and fold the zest through. So that's the madeleine batter done. Now, unlike regular cake mixes, this is actually going to sit in the fridge for 15 minutes. The secret to a good madeleine with a nice little bump on is that the batter is cold. So I'm just going to place some cling film over the top, like so, and pop it in the fridge for 15 minutes. So whilst the batter's in the fridge, it's a good time to prepare the tray. Now this is a traditional madeleine tray. You have these lovely shell-like grooves in the tray and they usually come very non-stick, but we do not want the madeleines to stick at all. So to prepare them, I've got some melted butter, which I'm going to brush in each of the grooves and just give it a coating like this. Like I said, this is the traditional tray for these. You can actually make these in a cupcake tray as well using the same technique, but it does require a longer baking time. Now they're buttered, I'm actually going to put this in the freezer for a few minutes just for this layer of butter to set. So the butter has firmed up after the tray's been in the fridge and I'm gonna do a second layer of butter. And again, this is just to make sure that these madeleines do not stick. And doing this second layer of butter just spreads that first layer out a little bit as well. So you don't get any clumps of butter. So now the tray has been double buttered. I'm now going to dust it with flour. So I've got a small sieve here. I'm just going to go over the top. And this dusting, again, just helps release the madeleines once they're cooked. And the butter will help the flour stick to the tray. So you want to make sure that it's in all of the grooves, but only a thin layer. Okay. 
And note how I've got a piece of paper under the tray, because now what I'm going to do is turn the tray upside down, give it a bang, and let that excess flour fall out. And there I have a perfectly lined madeleine tray ready to be filled with the batter. So I'm just going to clean this up and grab the batter from the fridge. So to fill the tray, I'm going to use a piping bag, no need for a piping tip. And I've put the piping bag in the glass just to help me fill it up. And now I'm going to go in with the batter. Now the batter does kind of look a bit funny after the fridge, so I'm just going to give it one more mix, just to make it a bit smoother again, because it can get a bit aerated. And then I can fill the bag. bag up and I'm just going to cut off the top. So what I'm actually going to do is pipe a ball in the center of the madeleine. So I'm not actually going to purposely fill the tray. What will happen is that as it's baking it's going to expand into the shape. So just like this and that's enough. So there's a little bit of batter left over in the piping bag, so I'm going to pop that back in the cup and I can actually store that in the fridge because I'll do another tray. And these are going to go in the oven. Now the oven is higher than a usual baking temperature because we want to get a nice round bump on these madeleines. So the oven is at 170 degrees with fan, 190 without. And they're going to bake between 8 and 9 minutes, so quite quick, so I'm going to keep a close eye on them. So here are the madeleines. This was eight minutes exactly. They've got these lovely little bumps on them, which is perfect. And whilst they're still hot, I'm going to turn them out the tin carefully, and hopefully they'll just pop out. Oh, couldn't have worked more perfectly. So only once they're out the tin, I'm gonna leave them to completely cool. So with the leftover batter, I did a few more madeleines and I actually put a raspberry in each of them. So you get like a hidden surprise on the inside, but they still look beautiful and smell so good. So out they come. So you can see these ones had a little bit too much butter, but never mind, butter's still good. And they've come out beautifully along with the lemon ones. All I'm smelling is lemony goodness. I don't actually know which one to try first. I think I'll go for the classic lemon, especially this one. So soft and light mm, and baked to perfection. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. This is really hitting the spot just with the lemon. It's already enough, but I think I need to try the raspberry as well. Oh, love opening and seeing the pink. Wow. Now these cakes only last a couple of days, but the best part is that you can actually keep the batter in the fridge for three to four days and bake them fresh should you want to. But I'm gonna keep these in an airtight container and even if they're on the slightly drier side. That's totally fine because they're still satisfying my craving. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget you can find all the recipe in the description box below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and of course like this video and comment below any other recipes you want to see. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you very soon.